Hey, it's Thursday. Oh man, are we gonna have fun today? <laughs> so I totally screwed up <laughs> this today at lunch, or not at lunch, but at my evening, my um, afternoon <laughs> class. And let me show you what we did. All right, yellow and green, my favorite colors. <laughs> All right, so let me just show you. First, we got a we got a right away toast. Um, so today we have a chili water pale ale, and so we're gonna toast right away. <laughs> I can't wait <laughs> and see what you guys are gonna come up with. And so cheers everybody. Here's to another Thursday night for three colors. Triad colors. We're going to do it. So I learned a little bit about triad colors this week. That's about, oh wow, that's bitter. <laughs> that's a Mundelein um, beer. It's actually from Illinois. So we'll see how that tastes and stuff. So welcome everybody. I see a lot of you. I already asked you guys what on, on the chat, what you guys are using for colors and stuff. And so, you know, put them up there. And actually, thanks so much everybody for um, putting up your last week's two color. It was, that's so cool. So, so cool. And um, let's see, we're gonna go right away to and just show you uh, the newcomers here, uh, where to get all this stuff. Here you go to my website, beckerart.net, pick up everything. Anytime I get an um, email or a call or whatever, I always direct everybody to my, to my um, website because everything's on here. So just go here and you'll find everything. And then you wanna see the, um, not, not that yet, we're gonna go to the supplies first. So the supplies for all the newcomers, we're using Holbein paints, because they do not dry out and um, they don't have oxgall in them. And so we're gonna be using Stonehenge paper and because they can wipe out and my brushes, of course, which you can get on my website, right? All right, I'm doing this fast today because I wanna get going because there's a lot of, we have a lot to do here. So let me um, first go, let's first go to our value study. So here's what I did. There's the um, image I painted this afternoon and the three colors that I used were yellow, bright yellow, like a um, permanent yellow light, a peacock blue, and a violet, a permanent violet, which is really dark. And um, I just, did, it was not a good combination. <laughs> I'm not sure what I did there, but, and I actually made the whole background, I thought in the one value and color, but I could have used some of that violet, I think in the foreground, even though I tried to separate it, but the green and the violet just kind of fought each other. And the yellow and violet are great, but the green from the blue when I mixed with the yellow just didn't work out as I had planned. And it's okay, but it doesn't give that nice sense of um, what I want in a picture. So if you look here, um, hold on one second. If you look and you look at this area, the bike, the tree, the wheel, the, um, the flowers and such, that should be the foreground, it should be the darks. And the bike even itself is a darker color than the background. And I made this, if you look at this, I made the background not quite as light as I should have, maybe a little bit lighter. And then I made the bike bright so it doesn't have that feeling of being in the foreground, though it is overlapping, so I have that, and I have the brightness of that, I have that. It looks okay, but I just don't feel it has the nice feeling. I did move the tree over too, if you notice here in the drawing, because this right here is tangent with the edge of the tree is edge of the potted plant. So, um, or the basket in the plant. So I moved it over. Also it's tangent to the seat. And so I moved it over to this area. So when you draw it up, move your tree or just take it out. Some people took it out and, and lean it on something else or, or just have a kickstand up. <laughs> and so, but um, a couple of other students had some really great colors. Um, I didn't like these two choice of colors, but let me go right to the tabletop and let me show you what I'm gonna use tonight. So again, here's the painting I did. And again, it looks a little bit different from that, but see how this is the light and it does kind of look like it's light and the tree, it's kind of blah, you know, dull and brown and gray and, and I guess it's okay and everything's fine, but. It just did not come out the way I had planned. I wanted the really nice bright light to come through the back and kind of come forward because that's what this is. If you look at the, if you look at the um, right here in the corner, look at how bright the background is and how the light is coming across there. And I did not get that. And I don't like not getting something when I'm trying to paint something. So this light right here uh, should have been lighter and we should get this stuff all coming through here really quickly, all right? So here on my palette, you'll see the colors and I tested a lot of things. I made myself a color wheel. You know, I just put down my green, my red, my blue and orange, my yellow and purple. And then I chose, uh, I chose these tricolors and just tried to put them down. And I just test them like, by doing a little circle thing here. And I just sort of see what they look like um, flowing into each other and too. And so this is the, what I'm gonna use this time. I'm using the horizon blue, which is a light blue. 
I'm going to use the dark purple and the red and you know for my green you know you don't always have to make your lights green and I just that's one of my least favorite colors and why I use it this afternoon I have no idea again I always say that I never want to use green but uh, it's just a hard color to use and so I want to make it more of the lime green for into the yellow and then I ended up making it gray or green and it's just it was not what I had intended so we're skipping green altogether we're going to put it in a blue and um, blue and make it more of a fall scene so we're going to go with this thing right here right when you see on my palette those are the colors I'm going to be using the purple dark purple the um, this is called light red which is like a terracotta and then light blue and so let's get going here so we got a lot to do <laughs> and if you ask questions please let me know and let me just see who's here really quickly and um, while I'm over here so hello Sue hey Mill hey Linda also got Lynn we got Dixie we got Aaron we've got Linda Sonia Ann Joyce Joyce did a decent job and a really, really nice job. She actually used better colors than I did. She used complimentary colors. Good going, Joyce. <laughs> Love that. Susan, Suzanne, uh, we got Carol, Sonia, Mary, and Becky. Thanks. And Becky came and saw the uh, show with me at the, at the um, uh, uh, Kenosha Public Museum uh, where the TWSA show was at. And uh, what a great show. If you have a chance, go up to Kenosha. And it's up for a month, I think, until uh, get to get a chance to see it. Hey, Tina. Hey, Tina from Oshkosh. All right, so here we go. So, again, ask questions when you see me doing something that you have no idea what I'm doing. All right, so we're going to do the background again first. And we're going to make it the lightest color. And even if you leave it white, it would be almost be better than putting a color like I had done with this one, because I want to get capture the light really bright coming through here. Even if I got to make it so like the sun is right here, and I put it like no, I normally do where I put the sun orangey. I've got orange, so I can actually do that this time. So I'm just gonna wet the background, and I'm gonna use blue, make it nice and light. Joyce, said, who we were just talking to, there she had used blue and it looked pretty nice. So I'm gonna put a little blue in the background sky. I'm using a light blue, I'm using this horizon blue and I'm um, just gonna make it light and bright, bright and light. And that's gonna hopefully make it look like the sun is really gonna be powerful through here. And the side of this wall can also be that color. And if I wanna gray this blue, I can make it, see I mix these two colors together, I get that color right there, it's like a purpley blue. And so I can use that for kind of graying it down a little bit. And so I'm gonna go right over this bricks. Now I can go over the tires, but I do want to have a, a little edge of white on the tires so that it gets to be like the, again, the sun is gonna be in back here. It's just pushing against this bike and something I didn't get this afternoon. And, you know, it's always, I guess, um, good to do it twice because <laughs> the first time is always, I mean, you never know what you do. So if, like I said, don't feel bad if you, you know, if you don't do a great job in the first one and you always try it again or try something else with the same kind of technique or use different color palette like I did and don't use the same one again and again. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So uh, the color palette, don't use yellow, <laughs> peacock blue and, and permanent violet. It just was not nice. <laughs> Yeah, if you do get a chance, I see that um, Susan says she missed it. But um, if you get a chance to get up there to the um, to the, to Kenosha anytime, I think it is a month or so that's up, a month or a month and a half, check out um, watercolors.org and they'll give you all the information there on their website. And so see how I'm keeping this pretty light and I'm going down here, I'm going to put this right into the grasses. Now, I'm not going to make it look like the photograph and I didn't give you a color photograph so that way you cannot copy the photograph and I want you to really to think about the colors that you're using. Like how can I use the colors and how do they um, correspond to the values. It's what this whole thing is about. Like we, first we use one color, then we use two colors, then we're using three colors. I want you to constantly think about the colors and not about what they are in the photograph. Yes, the photograph has certain colors and you're going to maybe want to use them because if it looks good in the photograph, that's fine. But how do you change that? How do you make it look more artsy? And that's what I'm trying to teach you here is just to be able to use your own colors, your own ideas, and then just make it look, you know, great. And so I'm gonna go right into the tree this time too. And I'm gonna put that into the tree. And can I go around this? 
It was just, it wasn't falling together. This painting, it just, a lot of things were separated and things are all by themselves. Like this tree doesn't correspond to the rest of it. It should be like flowing into other parts of the a painting. And so that's what I want to do. I want to have things to flow through and do big areas. We're not copying the photo. And if you did have a great photo and you copy it, that's great. And a lot of um, the paintings up in Kenosha were like that, where they um, have beautiful photographs and they copy them to a T and they're very, very tight. But that's when you're going to have to do it just like the photograph. And that's where you would go slowly and do things piece by piece. But I'm trying to teach you how to go away from doing it just like the photograph and maybe make it a little bit creative in the fact that you have to do something to it to make it look better than a photo. And give it some feeling and mood. And I feel you get a lot of mood and feeling in your paintings when you kind of are very creative with it. You are the um, artist and so you get creative with it. And so here now we got the blue background. And so that's the background, that's the lights. And now I'm gonna go into the lights of the bike and the middle tones and, and darks, we're gonna, darks are of course last, but now I'm gonna go into like middle tones. Those are my lights and that's the background. And I don't have to worry about, oh look at this, spatter. It's why I need a spatter, it just <laughs> dripped. And so it's telling me I should spatter. So let's spatter. <laughs> See the paint talks to me, it tells me what to do. <laughs> Let's try another one of these beers. Toast. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. This seems very bitter. This chili water. It's called chili water. A bitter pale ale. Oh, yeah, that's bitter. Oh, boy. <laughs> a bitter beer face I'm going to make in a second. Okay, so let's go in here and get some more of the blue in the background. All right, now let's go into our middle tones. And so we're going to go into the plants. And the bike becomes part of these plants and stuff. So you want to not just... Um, which I did uh, before is I kind of did the flowers and the bike together, which is okay, but I want to make the bike not as light this time because I just want to make the rim of it light. And so I'm going to make it probably, I'm going to start going into the, my orange, my burnt orange. It's called, it's called light red, but it's kind of like a burnt orange. And so if I mix that with a purple, that becomes kind of a, um, kind of a brown. And also with, I mix it to a blue, it kind of becomes kind of a gray. You know, so is you want a gray bike? No, no, I don't. So <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go in the pure, this color here, maybe a little bit of violet, see what happens from there. That's probably going to make it brown too, right? So we're just going to go in here and make the basket like orange. Of course, orange is one of my favorite colors. So we're going to make the flowers maybe a little bit orangey. Any questions? Nope. Okay. Keep them, keep them coming. Keep them coming. I want questions. I'm dying to see what you guys use for color. So... You know, hopefully you do a better job than I do picking like this afternoon. Hopefully this is a better combination, but you never know. I mean, people use your colors that you really like. And I know, I'm not sure if you got my newsletter this week, but if you got it, um, there was a great video by this lady um, who talked a little bit about the triads and how they, how you can use different triads and stuff. And it's really, it was kind of interesting, very interesting actually. And basically you can use any color combination is what it ended up being, I, I, I thought, because if you look at how she's doing her triangle, and uh, and to her color wheel she would do a triangle that could be really close to this side or it goes way across you know this way or this way wide like you know complementary or um yeah the primary colors and the secondary colors you can do that or you can take two of these and go across and make one you know and so i or she made like three in a row right here and that was also like three everything was about triad so you pretty much can use all that any way you want basically so just, you know, don't make it too scientific. Just go in and see what you like and what kind of works good for you. Also for the painting, like this painting didn't work well. So I thought, you know, some people make light green. This may have been okay for green, but I'm not a big fan, you know, liker of green, <laughs> liker, if that's the word, <laughs> a liker of green. So, um, you know, it kind of got kind of, you know, the yellow and green, it just did, I don't know. It's just not my favorite. It, it worked out okay. And a couple of people said it was okay, but uh, it's not, to me, it was a failure in the fact that I didn't use get the, the values and the colors I wanted. I didn't get the feeling, the emotion of the, of the picture. So we're going to try something totally different. And there's going to be no green in here. <laughs> That's the one reason I don't, I, when I go out in plain air in the summer, oh man, it's just, you know. But you can change things around a little bit, even when you're on plain air painting. I change things around a little bit. And see, now I'm used to using the orange color. That doesn't mean you have to just use the orange color. I could put a little bit of violet into that orange color 
you know, I can just let it float it and it'll kind of separate on its own. Maybe the seat and keep parts light. The edges I'm going to try to keep a little lighter. See, I'm pushing everything together. You know, I'm not, I'm not forcing things out. You know, I'm trying to put things together as one. And by having, it's almost like the two color we did last week where the background was the blue or the background was a color and the flowers were another one. Well, this is the same type of thing. I'm doing the background as one color and the foreground is another, but I can have a third color. So that's kind of mixing in with the, with the colors in the front. And I could even put some of the purple in the back there too. I mean, it's not going to hurt it. Like down here, I can put a little bit of the, because if I mix this blue and the violet together, you get a nice lavender almost because this blue, light blue has a little bit of um, white in it. So you're going to get a little bit of a lavender when I'm mixing it, this together. And I can put a little bit over here and then I can make it, you know, I can even put it onto my um, bike here a little bit. Take a little bit of this violety color, put it on the rim of the bike. And actually now this whole, I gotta think like, where's the light coming from? If the light's coming in here, leave the edge of that tree with white. And I'm gonna have the light kind of come through here, hit the wheel. And then these plants over here, which I'll make them a bluish violet, you know, because it's aer aerial perspective. You know, aerial perspective is like the mood or the atmosphere gives it color too, because it's engulfed by maybe the, the sky you know and that's a far distance but you can also you know as an artist i can take my artistic license and make the aerial perspective really close up so that is going to be the color of the grasses it's not going to be green like it really is i mean it really is the color of grass but i don't have to use that you don't have to use that you can use the three color that you decided to use you can use the triads it works. I mean, I tell you, I've seen some beautiful paintings that people have done. Now, I've never done the triad in the teaching, so that's why I went out and went studying it and stuff. And so, so that's why I probably did that. You always learn from your mistakes. See, you always learn from your mistakes. So if you do the first one like this, don't feel bad. You know, you can do you can do another one, and you'll learn from it. Every time you do a mistake, every time you do something you didn't like, that's just one closer, one step closer to getting better and better and better. I love when my students make mistakes or they don't like something they did because then I got something to teach them. <laughs> if they do have a really good painting, I have nothing to teach you guys. So do some um, <laughs> aerial perspective. Pamela, aerial perspective is like, you know, the mountains in the distance you see um, and they look kind of purpley, um, but mountains really aren't purple. They probably have the green trees on them or in like Arizona, the earth is red. But when the red mixes in with the blue of the sky, you get a purple, right? So the sky is engulfing. And so it's atmospheric perspective, I think they should call it, instead of aerial perspective, because the air is kind of penetrating the, um, the scene back there because it's so far away. So that's aerial perspective. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> Pam likes the yellow one. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't like the yellow one. Okay. You can, you can have the, you can have the yellow one. I don't like that one. <laughs> you use yellow. Maybe you can do a better job with your tree and your browns and stuff, but I don't like that one. <laughs> so here we go with a little bit of scale, the more purpley purples in here. And so this is my middle tone. I'm doing my middle tones now to get my middle tones in here. And, um, and then after this comes my darks, right? I mean, you have nothing left after the lights and then the middle tones. And again, I remember this is also going to dry to about 20% lighter. So already I feel so much better. And I noticed after I got done with that, I painted too many pieces. It's so important when you're doing your first wash, your background and your foreground, doesn't matter that you paint through things and you paint big areas because that's what watercolor is all about is putting and dropping pigment into bed water, into water and letting it do its thing. If I'm going up here and doing these little dots and um, I catch myself doing that once in a while, you know, we just kind of paint little things that are right and right away you lose the sense of the freshness of the paint. You want the paint to do its thing by where it's floating and not everything has to be identified so particular in the beginning anyway. So give yourself a shot and just wait and then let this all let it all bleed together like when you do a crowd of people you don't do each person you do the whole crowd scene and i have that one um if you ever take one of my workshops you're going to do one of these exercises that we do in the morning 
where we do a big crowd scene. So here I'm going back in there, get a little bit of violet in there, just making the tree a little bit more out of focus. That's another thing. By doing this, by painting through, you get things more out of focus and everything, not everything is so in focus and stuff. And it's so wonderful getting these soft edges. Later on, you can get tight as ever. And especially with your darks, you're going to have to get tight with your darks because the darks create shapes. And that's what you're going to have to do later anyway. So, so this is a much better start. It's always, I feel sorry for you guys in the afternoon on, on Thursday in my class because they're definitely our guinea pigs and they always help me out. So thanks, Joyce, and all you guys at the, in my classes because we, we kind of figure things out. But it's all good because we figure things out. And so actually, in a way, they're learning more because we're all figuring it out together. You know, I've done triad paintings before when I was at American Academy. When I took my classes, what happened was each month, um, the first week we would do one color. Second week we do two color on one day, and then the third week on one day we do a three color and then full color. But we did it on the same image, you know, for that whole that whole month in classes. We had class every day, and so um, once a week we do that thing. But uh, one painting we did had to be done first with one color, then two colors, then three colors, then full color. And so that's um, I didn't want you guys to do that and use the same paint because you guys I get really bored with the same image and if the image is bad then you're really stuck you know if you don't like the image <laughs> so I did it differently so next week we're gonna do a full color again we'll just go right back to full color but hopefully you can see what we did with these that you don't always have to go with full color and you can actually go with like a three color or a tri color and just figure out what your painting is going to be beforehand because maybe there's a color pattern that you really like. And so right now I'm actually just talking because I'm stalling because everything's wet. So <laughs> give me some questions, guys. Maybe if you made bicycle purple, it may have looked better. Oh, I'm in the other one. Yeah, probably would have. The yellow one was kind of ugly. <laughs> Though a lot of those bikes that you see that people paint and put in their garden, they are yellow. And so I'm um, actually one of the ladies that in my class on Thursday, Judy, she has a yellow bicycle in her. And that's why I reason I actually did this one um, because Judy has a has a um, yellow bike in her in her yard garden. So another thing I wanted to show you that I changed was, if you look in the picture, this bar, I made it a boy's bike, or it's like uh, halfway between the boy and the girl's bike, I put the bar across the top, because I had the little bar right here, and that just, to me, was just, it, it, didn't, it didn't made this whole area um, just kind of like, it, it broke it up a little bit by putting the bar across up here, instead of way down here, a little bar. You know, just things that you see that, you know, right now this makes it look kind of tangent. It just doesn't have a nice feeling in here. So by putting the bar across up a little bit higher, it just made that, took care of that. So those are the things to think about when you're actually doing it the first time and then you see things like that. And then the second time you won't do that again. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, I think I stalled enough here. Let's see. And I should, one of these days I gotta give myself a hair dryer in here again. <laughs> Ever since I got out of my old studio, the one I had to let go of, um, I still have everything in boxes from my old studio, my um, storefront studio, and now I'm in my home studio. But um, I, I still have boxes. They're still packed away in boxes somewhere. All right, so um, come on. Other, okay. Um, these are those weekly classes. <laughs> oh, Pam remembers. Pam is also went to American Academy of Art, and she remembers those assignments. <laughs> All right, so let's go. Let's see. Now our darks. Our darks, our darks, our darks. So the flowers now this time. Let's, um, with my little smaller brush, and I'm going to lean over here, and I'm just going to put some flowers in here. Now they're going to be darker because um, I'm also going to go negative paint around some of the lighter ones. But these are, I'm putting my darks now, and so I'm letting things bleed. And so, since it is wet, I, I, I'm going to get a soft edge, so I might as well just do some negative painting and it'll end up being soft edged also. All right. Yeah, I think, uh, Susan, I think I like these colors better than my afternoon colors too. <laughs> these are much better. <laughs> I don't know why I always use green. I, I have no idea why I start with my green. And I know I don't like green, <laughs> but I do it anyways. Because it's in the picture, you know, again, we always want to paint what's in the picture. And that's a big thing a lot of times is you, you see what's in the picture. And so you're like, I have to paint it that way, right? I mean, it's just something we kind of feel like we have to do. Because if a, if a, if a you know, plant like this is green in the, in the picture, 
you just feel, especially as beginners, they feel like they really need to make it look like the photograph and make it and copy the photograph. And so you tend to really, you know, copy it to a T. And so when the color is green, you're going to go with green. And, that, you know, I knew this was green, but I know I usually don't like the new green, so why not change it? But, you know, just something happens when I'm in classes or something. <laughs> so there's a purple, you know. you know. Is that bad? No, it's not bad. It's just not the color that it is. But it's, it's the colors that I'm using as a try, my try colors, and it'll work out perfectly because I'm not going to be using any other colors besides these three and what they ever, whatever they can mix together to get. So that's going to be awesome. You know, I mean, it works. It works. A lot of artists do that. They, that's how they, that's how they pick their colors. And, and when you're doing an abstract or where you're not actually doing an object and you're just doing things that really helps to um, try different triad colors and see which ones work together and which ones don't. Put a little bit of the blue in there too. You know, just kind of get in there, and I mean, you can use it to its fullest extent. Then you can just, um, you know, the thing is, then you're really gonna not have to worry about which colors to use. You're not going into your palette and going, oh, I, be I better use this one and make it all rainbowy. You know exactly what colors you have to use, and and mixing them together, you know, helps it out a little bit. So I'm putting a little bit of blue in here now to again get some color. This is my center of interest, so. I'm just letting it mix together. And again, you notice how I'm trying to um, make things float through each other and not do pieces. Doing pieces of painting is the most dangerous thing. You, if you start painting pieces, it really, it just makes everything not work together. If you want things to work together, paint through. Try to go through and just go from one object to the next and worry more about the value of that object. And then when I do my hard edge darks, that will give the, uh, the shape of things to come for sure. You know, right now it's still, everything's a little wet. So I'm still getting, I'm putting in my darks now, but they're gonna be soft edge darks. And then when I get my really dark darks, the crisp darks with hard edges, you'll see how them, they'll pop things out. And all of a sudden the image will identify itself and what that object is. Right now I can't because again, it's wet. So I'm just again, stalling. So you guys better start asking some questions here. <laughs> oh, uh, Pam turned in, uh, tuned in late. What kind of beer? I am drinking, oh, thanks. For giving you a chance to sip again. <laughs> I am drinking a chili water pale ale. Oops, I just spilled it on my brushes. <laughs> and it's from Mundelein, Illinois. It's a tight head brewing company. So a little bitter. Oh, look at this. See, I just spilled it on my brushes. <laughs> so we have some beer brushes to this afternoon. This evening oh that's bitter wow <laughs> not my favorite bitter beer but i used to do advertising for uh, miller coors um at uh at um um <laughs> oh my god foot and belly <laughs> i was gonna say um jwt but that was the first job i had in advertising but uh, i worked for foot and belding and we had um now we do the innovations for for um, all the beers, the Miller Lite, Coors Light, and all the other companies they have, which they have Blue Moon and all those other beers. All right, and so here we go. And now we're gonna go and get darker and darker as we go along. And then again, you notice how I'm painting through? I'm still not getting my details. I'm just getting my values now. I'm, I'm pushing my values to their extent where they're gonna stay. You know, we're at the end, but this time I'm making them fit together. I'm letting them work together. And like I'm getting that light, that light's shining in through here. And the darker I get, it's going to really shine this time. And it always takes two, right? It takes, it takes time to figure it out. <laughs> and so we're going to go in here and get some nice color on the actual bicycle itself. Oh, a good question, <laughs> Linda. My flower girl painting that I purchased from you has green in it. Oh, no. <laughs> and I always think to myself, but it doesn't like green. <laughs> I absolutely love that painting. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, I don't mind light green and really dark green. I just don't like the middle green, the stuff in the middle. Does beer count as a color? Um, actually, look at it. The beer is like a, um, a golden color, <laughs> like golden Colorado, right? <laughs> So maybe it's going to throw a little gold in there. Oh, that means I'm cheating then. I'm going to get a little gold in this color. Uh, let's see. Did you... These little foxes come back. 
Uh, no, Becky, the faxes are gone. They're, they left about a week, um, last Wednesday. Last Wednesday, they took off. They didn't even say goodbye. But there are, boy, seven of them. They were so cute, man. They're just uh, amazing little little creatures. I did get some imagery and I got some videos and so I'm going to go through. And so one week we will be painting uh, probably the mom because I, and I've got a couple of the kids. So I'm going to put together some kind of composition. I'm going to have to put it together in Photoshop because I didn't get anything that was super, super great for, you know, com compositionally perfect. You know, it's hard when you're, when it's always in the morning, no sun up and there's no, you know, light on them is like it would be if there's a sun up and stuff like that. But I can figure something out. We'll, we'll, we're gonna we're gonna do the painting of something with the foxes. Very cool. I hear they're coming back again next year. That's what people tell me that they usually come back to the same spot. Though I may have to put um, put them try to get them <laughs> to. They were under my shed, and I couldn't use my shed then for a while because all my um, framing stuff is in there, and so I couldn't do any frames for anybody. <laughs> All right, and so here, I'm going to put a little bit of blue. By making this darker, then it makes this light on the side of the, on the, side of the tree pop forward. Again, every time I put in a dark, I try to think, what am I trying to do to create this light to come through here? You know, the light, always remember where your light is at. If you remember where your light is at, then you know that you can, and actually, I can, if I put blue on this side, it will register as like it coming from the blue from the background. So I'm going to float a little bit of the blue into the orange that I have there. And then I'll give the impression that the, the background is um, reflecting into the shiny bike. It's a shiny thing. So you can just not use, don't ever just use one color. You know, even if you're using three colors, just put down one color. It doesn't really work that well. You know, and I found that this afternoon when I did the yellow bike, <laughs> you know, just, um, Put some color in there from elsewhere. I mean, it just is one of those things you do. I, I mean, constantly tell you that too. And so why I didn't do it this afternoon, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> so here we go. And this is looking better already. Look at this thing. This is looking so much nicer. I haven't even had the darks in yet, the dark darks. So coming in here, get the background. And then there's a pedal here. So we're going to get this. I mean, follow your value study. The value study is there for purpose, for a reason. You want to stick to that. Don't go away from that. I don't care what colors you use. You have to follow the value study. And it's because if the value study is right and it looks good, that means your painting is going to look good if you follow those values. Now, on this scene, the black and white I took, the background to me, I should have done made it even lighter than it is because it's almost the same value middle tone as some of the things in the on the dark areas up here so that makes it harder for you to make it look nice i mean it should really accentuate the darks here and make that really light and so that way you really know which is in the shadow and which is in the um which is in the light because the background is light for me here and i could put things in here and i'm going to put the bricks in here but i'm going to make them very light and once I get into this really dark, dark in here with the tires, you're going to see how this thing is just going to pop out like crazy. It is going to pop out like crazy. I, I guarantee it. Did this afternoon. That's one thing it did do this afternoon. It does pop out. When you put in your darks, it always pops out. So here I'm getting some nice darks. And you're probably thinking to yourself, man, oh, I dipped into some violet, which I, you know, I should be getting the violet. I shouldn't be making. But actually, when I'm mixing these two colors, the violet and this blue, you're kind of making the lavender. So cover up your other colors because you're not allowed to dip into those. <laughs> Remember, I said this is a three color. And um, I catch myself sometimes going in because you're just so used to doing that. And so catch yourself and do not go into the other colors. This is a three color study. <laughs> a little bit more dark purple here. I'm making this go dark and so this will be dark against the light right and kind of bringing this up here and again see i'm floating other colors in there once i put down a, a watery wash um i put color i float color you know me that's my thing float your color gotta float it this is a really bright orange if i leave it light watch this if i take this and clean this off a little bit Get a little paper towel. Watch how light this this orange gets. This light red. It's an actually wonderful color. See, look at this. You can get a really bright, bright orange there. See how nice that is. So, oops, I just spattered it in there. So take that orange and then 
you know, use that orange for maybe some really bright, but you got to use it more like a tint and not like a deep, because if you use a lot of pigment, you're going to make it too dark. So use it with less pigment, but pick it up, pick up enough and then just drop it in there and see how bright you can get it on your white paper. That's it. These are going to be some of the flowers that are just going to be sticking up out of there. All right, what do we got to do here next? Okay, we got to do the front fender. We got to do the forks. All right. How much time do we have left here? Oh, we got plenty of time. We can slow down here a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to toast again because that beer is very bitter. <laughs> That's what I get for testing out every week a different beer. You never know what you get. <laughs> it was actually um, a craft beer store um, a block away from where we teach on Thursdays. And so that's where I get my beer for the Thursday night paint alongs. Because it's a good thing to toast and, and test a new beer out and just see. All right, I think we're ready for our dark darks. And our dark darks, I mean dark, really dark. Oh, I just went into a brown again. Boy, I'm so used to doing that, going to other colors. Sorry. I shouldn't be going into this, this one and this one. That's it. All right, so there's my dark purple. That's my purple. And why was I going? Oh, I the light. No, that's not going to help it make it darker. So I just have to go with this and this to make my darkest dark. Oh, I said you could use black, right? Oh, let's use some black. I forgot. You can use, you're allowed to use black to make it darker, your colors. So if you use like three light colors, you know, don't be afraid if you want to just use three colors that are closely the same. Let's say you use these three colors right here. Let's say you use red, orange, and yellow. And you want to use those, that's fine. That's three colors, you know, three different colors. And then you can use black to darken it to where you make your dark darks. So don't be afraid um, to use any colors you want. Don't have to use what I'm using. You know, try your other things. I like to see what you guys come up with. But now I'm using my dark darks and I put a little bit of black in this because I couldn't get a really dark, dark black with the colors that I was using. I, I can't get one like that. So I have to go with the, the actual black. Because I want to make some things really, really dark. I want to really pop, have them pop and they pop in the photo. So I have to, because they're really rich dark. And so like the tires for themselves, the tire right here, look at this. It's nice and dark. And see, I would just do, um, try to do everything in one brush stroke, but sometimes you can't. So I'm just going to go down here. Nice and smooth. Ah, right, look at that. And then, how about putting some color in there? Thicker. Let it float. Like it comes around here, this side, let it float around there. In the bottom a little bit, reflecting maybe, how about the blue on the side here? Yes, look at that. Just let it float in there. That's what watercolor looks best is when it is floating. It just looks so beautiful when you have pigment floating inside a, a puddle of water. It just does its own thing. I, I can say I can't say it enough how important that is to let the paint do its thing. Don't do little things that even it does. I don't care how small this is, this little part. You can always float colors as long as it's wet. Let's make this one blue that back there because it's farther back. So I can make this fork like it's in the back. See that colors farther back. And so if I make it blue, it falls to the back instead of comes forward. Here I'm gonna throw some shadow across this like it's coming across. That basket is um, is a red, so I better use the red for the shadow part end of it. So I with the color that the um, that's being shadowed upon first. Like this is a red, then make it a darker red. And then you can float other colors in that shadow. But at first, just go with the color of the of the object that you're putting the shadow on. Now, in here, I'll put a really dark dark when it's when it's dry. But right now, I can't because it's wet. And so let's get some really dark darks in here, and then I will put in texture, not texture, but the um, like lines of things. I'll do those later. Here's the brake, the brake handle, part of that. Here we got a little line going down. Here we got the stuff underneath the seat. See how I'm not identifying certain things? I kind of let things just, it, not everything has to be identified so perfectly. You can let things just bleed. We know it's a bike by a few things and then you don't have to say, you don't have to identify every single thing. If you do that, that's fine. And But if you're gonna do a really tight painting, 
after looking at what they do in Kenosha, when I saw the really fine paintings, you better be really good at doing everything in that painting. Because, boy, these people who do these really beautiful, um, really tight, tight works where they have every little thing in there, they are so clean and so perfect. I think they're even using a lot, a lot of them. I'm almost using the airbrush because of some of the um, things are in. And actually, I'm probably going to um, demonstrate the airbrush use next week, next Thursday. I want to show you guys how to use an airbrush. Um, you can buy these airbrushes. And actually, I bought one time um, one online that was going to be for I meant makeup, I guess. Ended up that um, they it was like a monthly service thing. And I really got scammed on that one. <laughs> and I thought I got a uh, um, airbrush were really cheap because they they give you makeup that you spray on your face or something but i just wanted the airbrush with watercolor <laughs> ended up that i had to send it back and I, they totally ripped me off and i didn't get any money back hardly i think i got a dime or something back it was a total scam total scam and um but since, since then i bought a different um because it was going to be a month after month. I was going to have to pay each month. I would be getting uh, makeup to spray on my face. <laughs> I didn't need that. <laughs> I just wanted the airbrush. So I bought myself an airbrush like that with, with its own pump and everything. So we're going to try that out and show you how to use that next week, maybe. Let's see if there any questions. Hey, Ann, you just figured out how to say hello? Hey, hello. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Okay, fun to paint the foxes. Okay, yeah, we're going to definitely paint the foxes. Oh, hey, yeah, Sue, we're doing a lot of wheels, aren't we? We're doing a lot of wheels. We did a, we did the carriage. We did, Actually, that's what's on the back of this. This is my uh, thing, but on the back of this, you see there's a carriage. <laughs> so, you know, you always use your, you know, your scrap paper. And um, this is, we had wheels the other week, right? So yeah, we're doing a lot of wheels, but that way, the more you do, you'll get really good at it. <laughs> I promise we don't do any more wheels for a little bit after this. We're not gonna do that many wheels. We're, we're probably gonna be doing a waterfall. I think a waterfall is coming up. Maybe some foxes. We still gotta do waves. Um, so we still got plenty to do. There's plenty of stuff we still have to do. <laughs> And also a lot of times I get um, you guys asking to do certain things and keep that, keep it going. I, I like, I love to hear to see what you guys want to learn how to paint. So there we have the, the back. Here's the petals. We're just doing the petals now. I want to make the one petal kind of colorful. Let's make it light blue first. What the heck? You know, you can just, it can be light blue. You can make it whatever you want. I just need something a little bit different here to make it look different from the rest of the bike. So, and the thing is, um, I used to build bikes and I used to, I used to love to build bikes and stuff. And so I know how a bike looks and how to put the form together. It's very important to know those type of things. Like if you know bicycles, for me, it's easy to do a bike because I built so many and put so many together that I know what goes where and, and, um, my dad used to build them too and uh, for a company. And so I would help them out and stuff. And so I knew a little bit about bikes and how to put them together. And I wanted to start my own bike shop at one time. And so I, it's one of those things that you really love to love to do it. And so I love riding them too. And so I know everything about the bikes. So you see how that blue kind of works in over this area. So I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom here. Reflect a little bit blue in these spots. And now I think down here I've got to go really dark to get my push my stuff back there. I want to push it back behind this. And so th this foreground pops forward. The weeds pop forward here a little bit. So I'll negative paint in some weeds here. Just get this dark. Let that be the chain, the chain um, guard. And that's what they call them. And I will maybe put some, um, later on when it's dry, I will put some flowers on top of that. So now let's put these little um, bricks in here. So I'm Clean up a little spot on my palette because I want to use this light blue that I used in the beginning. A little bit of spot there. So light blue and the purple. Remember, I used that to get a, a lavender. Well, I'm gonna use the same colors now. Real light, pretty wet. I'm just gonna go in here real quickly and put some of these bricks in there. I don't have to put them all in, though. I used to make my students put all the bricks in. If you're gonna start putting any bricks in the area of interest, then you gotta put them all in. But I don't think I have to put all these all in because it's in the background. And some will be a little bit lighter. Put 
Tina wants to know how to do it. Yeah, well, well we're going to do an airbrush. We're going to see how to use it. And it's pretty, and it's one that it's self fed, so you don't have to have all the little bottles and stuff. And and it's um, pretty inexpensive. You can get them like on on Amazon. I think I bought this one on Amazon just to see. And um, and it has its own compressor, like its own little compressor built in. And so it's a little bit of an investment. I think like 50 or something bucks, so like that, 50 or 60 bucks. But it's, um, you know, if you can get a really beautiful soft edge on it, then why not? Let's try it, see what happens. So let's get a little bit of this blue in here on the pedal side here. The seat, we can put a little bit of blue in there. Now I was telling my class is that if you're going to put these spokes in, it's like putting um, the, the, the electric lines in a painting on a landscape. If you put them in too thick, it looks horrible. So when you put these in there, when you put the um, light or the, the um, spokes into a wheel, put them in either with pencil, uh, the dark pencil, or make sure you have your rigger in one brush stroke and make them really thin. Nothing worse than if doing your whole painting and in the very end you put in these huge big honking lines in there. <laughs> it just does not look good. You know, so um, take your time or do it with a pencil. You can do it with a watercolor pencil. Um, you can even take a ruler if you want, if you want to make them perfectly straight. But they shouldn't be so thick that they stand out like a sore thumb. You know, and actually I'm going to start doing the, um, well, actually, a few more of these bricks down here. Okay, bricks over here. Put a, little, put a little light in the back of the bike here. And I'm going to use some white because I said you can use white and black. Remember, you can say you can use that. And so my background tree here, I'm going to put not as dark this time. I'm going to make it a little bit darker on this side, but I'm going to keep it down in that in that value. And still make it a birch and you could use your credit card thing you do all those tricks that you do for birch trees and a lot of people like to use the edge of that um of their wallet let me see if i get my wallet here I can just show you real quickly take your take your card don't take a, a one that you're gonna <laughs> use again and you can take your card and you do like a um like a sh like a ooh, not like that you kind of just take it across there I'm gonna use the side here. I'm just gonna, and you tap it, and you can just scrape it across to get to make it look like the, um, like a birch tree. You're picking up the texture of the paper, plus it's like you're squeegeeing it on there. You make a little lines you can scrape out too with this. So you can scrape, remember how we scrape the rocks? Well, that's gonna be now, it's gonna be a flower. So, there we go. My goodwill card works good. Goodwill also <laughs> in a painting. All right, so let's take our little fine brush here. And I'm going to take a really dark. And now here, how, this is how you do the spokes. And anything that's really finished fine, you make it up. And then practice it somewhere first. I know she has scrap paper. See how fine you can get. And then just fast brush strokes. And not thick. Because you make them thick, it looks horrible. I mean, it looks like... Like what kind of spoke do they have? And these spokes are barely even noticeable. And you don't have to go all the way down to the to the wheel end. You can just kind of go in here and just fake in a few. They're so thin, they're almost not noticeable. But a few in there will just help it out a little bit. Again, if you make it picture perfect, then yes, you'd have to make it even more steady. You'd have to use a ruler and use one of those ruling pens. Um, but we're not doing that. Not in this you know, one hour time that I had to do this painting. Again, if you copy a photograph, then you're going to have to make sure that you get it really, really, really well done. You know, I mean, you go in there and get everything that you see in the photograph and really make sure that you make it look like that. I'm putting a little, this is the back thing right there. I'm using the blue, which is a lighter color over the dark, but that's okay because I'm floating it. And um, what else we got here? Let's put a little bit of... Um, Little, little grass is coming up here, coming up through the bike here. Maybe a little bit of shadow going through there. Wow, that's much better. Much, much better this afternoon. Whew. 
redeem myself here. <laughs> so we're gonna go. So I don't mind if you use um, like a paint that has more of an opaqueness to it because you can use it over it and if you do it really fast and very thin, that's okay, or wet into wet and plop it into water and it can just, it'll look, it won't look um, opaque, it'll look transparent because it's floating and giving yourself a soft edge. Though, and now I'm gonna put the little lines in for the baskets. And again, just like the, um, the basket, or just like the bricks, you don't have to put every single line in there to make it look perfect. You, uh, unless you want to make it look like a photograph, then yes, you have to move everyone in. But I'm going to, again, I'm doing more of an impression of the basket. And so I, I don't have to get the, every single thing perfect. I just have to get the texture to make it look like, yeah, that's a basket here and there. You put a couple of little dots for the weave of the basket. The same thing with the background here. There's a weave in the back basket. This one's even more where I don't put that much detail into it because it's in the back. And why would I want to put detail? If you want to put like a couple of stripes on the bike or just have fun with it, it's up to you. Because once you get to this point, all this little stuff is just little details. Already, it already works out. Your painting is already pretty much done and it's working out well. And so you're just giving it a little bit of a, um, your personal touches to it. You're putting on your, you know, putting on the things that make it what you, the artist, like to do and kind of makes it towards you. Maybe, I know there's some people that put little dots everywhere and stuff, or they have these little white dots everywhere. You know, that's a kind of a personal thing that you do for your technique or style. Again here for our tree. All right, we're almost done here, guys. Get me some more questions. And again, thanks so much, guys, for um, posting your, um, the, boy, the flowers you guys did. Great, great job. I love that some of you who did it a couple of times because you just didn't like your color. It's so neat that you are so dedicated to making it right, you know, and ma making it when, what you want to do. Don't give it Don't give it a worry about if you do, don't do it exactly right or you don't like it the first time. Hey, look what I did this afternoon. <laughs> you don't always have to like what you do the first time. And try it again. And maybe even a different picture or try different colors. You know, it's all about just practicing and learning. And that's what we're here. I'm, I, this is a learning experience for me too, this one, the tricolor, because I really have never done the tricolor, like I said, unless I, when I was in school I did. But I stopped doing that and because I just, you know, I use full color all the time. But it was a nice exercise to see what other people do and how you use it and how you can apply the tricolors. I heard about it a lot and I had a couple of students in my class that would always do that, took other teachers and they told me about what the other teachers had done and I thought that was pretty cool, so I'm gonna try it. I, like I said, I had done it before in school when I was back at the American Academy. But here now we're putting in some blue flowers. And so now we're going to put a little white with this red and see what they can come up with and come up with like a light orange. Yeah, that's probably a pretty ugly color. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, it's like, well, that's kind of like a light orange that you can put on top of things. Now, if you're doing this um, on, a, on a, an original piece, you cannot um, enter it into a show like TWSA because they do not allow opaque colors so or white. And so you wouldn't be able to do this with this, this color, these colors that are very, um, where I put white in them. See, I put white in there. Unless I did it when I, did, I floated the pigment. Like when you float it and you leave it where it's very transparent because you, you can make opaque colors transparent by floating them and making them more like a tint of color. All right, I'm not sure I like this right here. That should be dark. All right, I think, let's see down here. You guys see anything that I should be looking at that you don't like? I don't mind when you say you don't like something. I, I mean, I do the same thing. I mean, look what it is this afternoon. <laughs> so here we go. We're gonna get a little darker down here. All right, I think that's a little bit darker down there to bring, bring it off. This has much better feeling to it. I think the light is a little bit better. Um, the forcing the light a little bit and this is a little bit darker. I think we came off a little bit better on this one than we did this afternoon. So not that the one this afternoon was horrible, but it just was not what I was thinking I wanted it to be. And that alone to me sometimes is, you know, I, if I want to be a certain way, it should be that way. That's the way you work. You know, you try to, you have something in your mind and that didn't work out. So 
Ooh, somebody, um, what do you think? So Tina asking me about maybe putting some trees back here, you know, like in the scene. Um, I probably should have done that in the very beginning, but I couldn't do that. Let me show you how to do that if you do it afterwards. Like, it's nice to have them soft edged. Like, I could re-wet it again too. I could spray it actually. I could even use my spray, but my, my um, Holbein sprayer and I can just spray it. You know, make it wet and then I just take the same color and yeah I think that's actually a good idea because it does seem kind of like I mean a couple of trees over here right this is in the picture I mean it's in the photograph and if I as long as I keep them light in the same color I don't want to go start doing any different kind of colors over here but I can put a few trees in there what the heck you know if I keep I can even have hard edges as long as I keep it low in value no contrast you don't want contrast back there because then you um, eliminate that light source that we are trying to keep, the, the value pattern that we're trying to keep. So thanks, Tina. That was a good suggestion. See? You know, I don't mind you guys telling me <laughs> what, the, what I should be doing. I don't get everything. I don't catch everything. Yeah, let's put this in. Actually, by making it darker right here, it makes my light on the tree even light and lighter. See that? Good suggestion. Anything else you guys can see? All right, so shadow under support bar or shadow on the basket. The support bar, shadow under the support bar. Right here, let's see, let's see what Mary said, or Anne says, shadow under the support bar or shadowing on the basket. Like there, and I think, I'm not sure where you're, Maybe in down here shadow, maybe this shadow a little bit darker. Oh, on the side here, yeah, that's a good idea. So maybe on the side here a little bit, make this side of the basket a little bit darker because this is the front and this is the side. So that's good, good choice. See that? You guys are get you, you guys are catching on. Good job, good job. I love it. Support bar shadow, huh? Let's see. This this should be a shadow from the the bar itself. All right, I think that's going to be about it. If I see anything else, put it up there and I'll do it <laughs> away from camera. And um, so let me take the tape off. I want to take the tape off. We'll go to this image. And so, so thanks again, guys. Here we go. There's the other one. Let me take the tape off of this one. But um, so thanks again, guys, for um, watching. And um, come back every week. Please tell your friends. Um, I'm, they're getting kind of popular, getting very popular. And I'm glad you guys are posting and I'm getting so many newcomers coming in and, and learning. And I just love the fact that you guys are learning a lot when you're doing this. And that's what that's why I'm here, basically. And that's why I'm keeping them free, too, because if I start doing the Zoom class, which I, I am going to do, but um, this way I can have as many people out there as you want. And in the Zoom class, I can only have so many people. And, um, and thanks, everybody, again, for donating. Anybody who's donating, thanks so much. It really does help out a lot since I'm not doing the Zoom classes. <laughs> and so here you go, see that? Look at that, let me just see what it looks like without this border behind it. And there we go. So we got yellow bike <laughs> and we've got the nice warm bike with no green. Look at that, you can have a picture with no green, isn't that great? So look at that, see that we can see uh, the, here, the cameras are different colors. And that camera's a little bit different. So, so there we go. So again, thanks guys. Let me see one last time if anybody's got a pedal. The curved one near the pedals, the curved one. I'll look into that. <laughs> thanks, thanks Ann. Thanks guys. And um, again, thanks for coming by. Bring, give me your suggestions again too. Make sure you give me your suggestions about what you want to paint. And, um, and we'll see you next Thursday. I don't think I've got anything. I'm not going anywhere. I don't think for about a month or so. I think my next workshop is at Dillman's up in um, Lacto Flambeau, Wisconsin. So if you're not signed up for there, I know a lot of you are signed up for that. So thanks a lot for doing that. And we'll see you then. We'll see you then. All right. So until next Thursday, I'm not going to finish this.